So up until this point, we've done a little bit of server-side coding with Node.js and a little bit of client-side coding with uh, jQuery. And today, I'd like us to start putting it all together. So today, we'll see how the client can make requests to the server and receive responses. Specifically, when you're dealing with applications, you're dealing with data. And with data, you typically have five different operations. You have the creation, where you want to make new data. You have deletion, where you want to get rid of data that you've created. You want to update existing data, right? You want to get data that is on the server back, and you want to search across your data. Did you guys follow that? Five things. Create new data, delete that data, update existing data, get data that is there, and do a search across your data in order to get a list of data. With me? It turns out that most of the applications that you will ever write or that you will ever use follow this pattern, right? You're working with data, you're working with users, you're working with comments, you're working with Facebook events, whatever. For each of those, you want to be able to make new ones, you want to be able to delete the old ones, update existing ones, and get access to the ones that are there. Is that clear? OK. So in this application, my goal is to basically have you guys do all of these things. So this is an application. It's a to-do list. Anyone here know what a to-do list is? It's like you write a list of things you want to do, and then you check them off. That's a to-do list. This is how it works. Look. You write some text like, I don't know, go to the gym. And you hit save, and it gets added to your to-do list. Bigger? OK. Go to, I don't know, Ooh. pack, probably. Um, what else might I want to do? Eat? Oh, wait, I have eat lunch. Okay, you can then, look, 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 you can, so what I've done now, if you think about it, every time I added a message, like, or I should say a to-do, like hello, when I hit save, that adds a new data item to the server. That just added something to the server, right? In this case, the hello object. When I click the checkbox button, it's going to update that data on the server. It's going to update the fact that it is now checked, that I've now completed the hello action. I can delete, right? So let's see. And I can search. So I can go to eat. Oop, eat. There you go. Yeah, it's, I, I did case sensitive, but you could easily make it insensitive if you want. Is that clear? This is basically, what, what, it, what is this? The checkbox? Why, why do they all have a delete button? Ah, so those are two different things. Look, so this just means it's done. I don't want to delete it, I just want to know that it's done, right? So if I refresh the page, you'll see it's still there. But then I can just decide to delete something that I've added, like this guy, and that's it, now it's deleted. If anyone else goes to that same page on a different browser, they're going to see the same thing. Does that make sense? Sort of? Yes, OK. So that's your homework assignment. Write one of these. Does it? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'll show you parts of it. We'll, we'll, do, we'll write some code now to help you out. So look, the way this works is very simple. Let me just explain in words first, and then we'll start working with some code. Or when you start creating a 
Huh? When you check something, does the delete button up, uh, just have to appear after that, or it no? It can it can because you can create a to do and say I don't have to do it. Delete. Right. Okay. So this is how it works. Look. The first thing you do is you fill in some text inside of that enter to do text up at the top. When you hit save, we're going to do a post to the server. That post is going to contain within it some JSON. That JSON will contain the message that was written there, as well as whether we want it to be checked or not. Okay, so we send an object to the server. The server will then store that inside of an array. This is going to be our database. Not really a database, but sort of. Anyone, know what a, anyone not know what a database is? OK. So a database is just a place where you store data. That's all a database is. OK? In reality, there are different kinds of databases that are optimized for searching and so on. But for now, just think of it that way. A database is just a place where you put data. Yeah, I Okay. So I have hot coffee in my hand, just so you guys know. All right. Um, okay, so that's the first part. So that's creating data, right? Once you've created data, we then want to go and search for the data in order to list it at the bottom, right? For that, we do a get, an HTTP get, and we say, okay, go and find me everything inside the to dos. If there's search text specified, we pass the search text as a parameter, which we use to filter down the to-do list. And then we return only the filtered down set. Clicking on delete simply sends a delete call to the server. Clicking the checkbox sends an update. OK, enough talking. Let's look at some code. So. The first thing we want to do when we have an application is we want to have our files sent to us from the server. Make sense? You want to be able to actually download the HTML file. So the first thing we should do is write a file server. But we have an example of this already, don't we? Where is it? Where is it? Was it this one? Here, this one, read file. Wait, 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 we have to, what's the first thing I have to do to make a server? Create server, which takes a function. What, does, what arguments does the function take? Create, okay. Then this returns a server object, which has attached to it a function. Can anyone remember that function? It's the function that starts the server. The port, not post. Port. No. Let's say 3001. OK. That looks like that. Good. OK. The next thing I want to do is, hang on. When I receive this request, this request is going to have a URL attached to it. Yes? So let's concatenate that with dot. Um, so the directory that where all my files are going to be in is going to be public. So relative to where I am, I want to go to public. And then I want to attach to that request.url. So that means if I go to localhost colon 3001 slash form.html, this will create dot public slash form.html. In other words, it will be a path to this. Does that make sense? Yes? OK. So now I want to read. How do I read it? fs.read file, the file path. Hang on, let me see here. Let me look at an example. Read file. 
Yeah, and then I take the callback and I send it back. Okay, if if it comes back as an error, what do I do? No, I can just end it. Wait, no file found. And I might want to put an error code. Hang on, response code, right? Status code. Uh, 404. Okay, my first question, these codes, what codes exist out there? What kind of HTTP codes are out there? Anyone know? Okay, do you know all of them? How can I find out? HTTP codes or response codes or status codes. There you go. You click on the very first link and there it is. Do you, all the codes. Hang on, look. There's the 200. There's the 404, not found, etc., etc. So you don't have to memorize these, don't worry. You can just search and find the error codes if you need to. Okay. Okay. In, in the other case, I want to do rest.status code of 200. Everything is good, and I want to send back the data. Does that look right? Anything wrong with what I just did? Okay, let's, let's try it. So we run node to do server. Okay, it's running. Now let's go to localhost 3001 uh, sl slash, mm, what's, what's a file we have in here? Yay.html. All right, it worked. Good. So we now have a server that knows how to send us files. Yes? Everyone with me? Does anyone not understand any of this code? Okay, good. So we know how to send back files. So now let's create an HTML file. Let's call it um, app.html. Okay, let's put in some basic HTML in there. My app, you don't need that, you don't need that. Okay, so now we have a blank HTML that we can access. With me? Yes? Okay. So now from here, let's put a script tag. We're going to write our code in here. We'll write code here. If you notice, I downloaded jQuery, which I put into jQuery.js. How do I refer to that? There you go. It's that simple. Yeah, but remember, it is in public, you're right. But look at this. In our server, we automatically concatenate the request with public. So it's going to be public slash jQuery. You get it? OK. Good. So at this point, we have access to jQuery. And we can, if this was an h1, we could select h1 and do .html, yay, this is fun. With me? So look what we've done. See the two, wait, wait, let me zoom in. So this is all the requests that the client made to my server. It requested for app.html. It got back a 200. And if you look at the, the response, it actually got the HTML back. And then it requested for jQuery. And there it is. Does that make sense? Sort of. OK. Remember, the first thing we need is to, we need to access this HTML file. That's what that was. Then once this loads, the browser looks and walks down and goes, wait, I need jQuery.js. It makes another request here, which then downloads the jQuery file. 
which it then executes. Yes? Sort of? OK. OK. So now, let's write some code. What do we want our application to do? You tell me. Remember, we want to be able to make data. We want to be able to show data, right? OK, so the very first thing, let's make a search. Let's make a basic search UI, OK? So what does a search have? You tell me. You've used search. Area for writing text. How do I make an area for writing text in HTML? You can do that, but let's keep it simple. How about an input box of type text? Now I have this. See, so yeah, I can write into it. Yes? OK, let me give it an ID of search text box. Let me also add a button to execute the search. How do I do that? Yeah, let's keep it simple and let's do a search. And let's give that an ID, ID of search button. Yay, now I have this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click that, and pff, something's going to happen. Yes? OK. Now, whenever this button is clicked, I want to do something. How do I know when the button has been clicked? Yeah, but so the, what's the first thing I need to do? Right, I need to select that, that search button, right? Search, wait, this guy. And then on, that is to say when click happens, call this function. Let me do an alert. Hi. Watch this. Click, hi. Click, hi. Click, hi. Got it? Yes? For every. For every argument? A function for every argument. What, what argument? No, well, yeah, sort of. Hang on. Just, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yes and no is the answer. OK. So we have a button. And now from this button, we want to access the search text, right? How can I access the search text? Huh? OK. So I access this. <laughs> this gives me that. And then I can do dot .val on it. This will give me its value. So const search text. Let me alert that. Alert. Alert, by the way, is just a special thing that opens up that stupid window. That's all it does. OK, so let's do search text. So if I type hello and I click that, I get hello. See that? If I do. With me? Yes, 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 yes. OK, good. Now, let's have a local list. And let's add a bunch of things to this list. Let's have an ID of, well, math.random plus string. Let's have a message of, mess, a message of, Go, go to the gym, and let's have a completed of false. You'll get it in a second. I now have a to-dos list, which has a, a single thing in it that has an ID, a message, and a completed. Completed means, did you complete this task? Message is the name of the task, that is to say, go to the gym, and then I just give it an ID. Math.random is just a, something you can do to get a random number. A number, it returns a number, right? If I do plus string, it turns that number into a string. 
Yes? Okay, so all I've done is I made an object that has an ID, that has a message, and that has completed. And I've added that to my array. Let me add a few more. So let's see, besides go to the gym, what else do I want to do? Take a shower. Um, and let's do one more. Okay, so we have these to-dos, yes? Okay, so the first thing, let's draw them on the screen. Let's draw this data on the screen so we can see it. So what is an element that I might use in order to draw a list of things? Yeah, unordered list which contains allies, exactly. So let's put in here an unordered list. Um, Let's give it an ID. So this would be my, my to-do list. And let's access it here. Const uh, to-do list. So this gives me that to-do list element. Now, let's do a for each. You guys remember for each? What does for each do? What does it do? For each one, for each item performs the given array. Exactly. So for everything, so for this one, for this one, and for this last one, this one, it's going to call this function. Yeah? Okay, so now let's create an li that we will attach to our unordered list. How do I create an li? There, I just made an li. So now inside of this li, let's put in the message to do item dot, what property do I use to get the message? This one, right? Yes. Can you explain this for the for the message for the for the Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 I get it. I get it. Look, this is our data. This is just data. It has nothing to do with HTML. It has not. It's just data. Yes. This data is an array of objects. Is that part clear, that we have an array of objects? Yes? Okay. Each object has in it three things. The ID of the object, a message for the object, and whether that object was completed. With me? Okay. So an ID, just so that I have a unique thing that I can refer to this object. A message, so I know what the to-do is. And completed, so I know if it's checked or not checked. Is that part clear? Just that part. Okay, this math.random, math is an object that has a function attached to it called random. When you call it, it will return a random number. I c you'll see later. I'm, I'm, this is gonna get more and more advanced, you'll see. Go ahead, what, what was the question? Okay, so if you wanted to access this one, what you can do is to do's zero dot message or dot ID. That will give you this. Yes? Yeah, is that clear? Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm doing to do's dot for each. That's saying for every value within, within to do's, call this function. Barzait kind of. Okay, so then for each of those, I'm going to create an li, const li. Now I need to attach this li to this ul. How do I attach one element to another in my DOM? Append. Append. 
Good. So I take this and I do voila. Let's, let me show you this one more time. For each to do, we're iterating. So we loop over this one, then this one, then this one. And that's it. This represents one of these. We create an li. Inside of that, we put in the message for that to-do item. Remember, plus does concatenation of strings, right? OK. And then we simply append that to my to-do list, which is this guy which when accessed here is this here. Is that clear? Hasta? Any questions so far? Yes. This? So this just creates a random number. I'm just concatenating it with an empty string to turn the number into text. That's it. Very simple. Is this part clear? Yes? Sort of? Do, does anyone want me to go through a debugger here? What, HTML? OK. Any questions, or you just wanted me to go up? OK. Can I scroll down? I've scrolled down. Wait, 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 hang on. Just one. Say again. The two crosses? You, you mean this? It's a plus, Jonah. Ah, what, what happens when you do a plus with a string to one, one of its sides? So we're building a string here. We're saying this. We're, we're building a string like this. And then let's say this, this is for this. We're building this. Got it? OK. Yeah. Wait, 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 hang on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Do you have a question? What? Why is n what not completed? Oh, why am I not using this yet? I'll one, wait. I'll add the checkbox in a second. I just want to do it a little bit at a time. That's next. Yes. What does to do list open the document create book? What does to do list? Oh, this. Yeah, it appends this element to this element. Oh my god, here, watch. I'll make it easier for you. Wait. Does that make it easier? OK, why did I store it in a variable? Does anyone know? Exactly, because this way, every single time we're looping, I keep going to the DOM and finding the element, going to the DOM, finding the element. Whereas I can just do it one time, just remember it, and then just append to it every time. Make sense? But okay, I'll keep it simple just so for now you guys can see it. Is this part clear? Stare at it for just a little bit longer. OK, so now, so so far, we, all we're seeing is this, right? Why don't I, when I write something like Jim and hit search, get just see this and not these two? Right, so let's, let's do something, right? So, let's do, so we want to be able to rerun our rendering. So let's put this inside of a function, const uh, draw list.
Let's put all, actually let's put this stuff at the top. Okay, how come I don't see a list? Exactly, we have to call draw list. Now we see a list, great. So now what we want to do is whenever search happens, we want to draw the list again, but this time, let's go to our draw list. Let's get access to our search text here. Now here's what I want to do. I want to filter this to-do list down to only items that match this search text. What can I do? You guys remember the filter function? Filtered. What will happen here? In here, we filter to-dos. Every to-do we say true. That means every to-do gets added to the filtered list. That means every item in to-dos gets added to the filtered list. We then iterate over the filtered list and render the tree, uh, render the, um, the list. But we don't want every one to be true. We only want the ones to be true that match this search text. Yes? Right, so we can say, so first of all, if search text is truthy, if there's no search text, let's just show everything, right? So only if search text, search text is truthy and to do item, let's search inside of the message, dot message, dot index of, so strings have a method called index of. It will return the index of the, where, so you give it a text, it will give you the index where that text exists inside of this text. No, no, no. You give it a text like, I am happy. If you then say index of happy, it will give you the index where happy is in that text. Make sense? Okay, so let's do index of search text, search text. and make sure that that index is greater than or equal to zero. Because if it doesn't exist, it will give you negative one, which is less than zero, so fine. So only in that case should we return true. In all cases, return false. Is that logic correct? So you're asking for index of something, right? Negative one is an illegal index, right? You're not allowed to have negative one. So it will give you negative one to say it couldn't find it. It will give you a legal index, that is to say zero up, if it does find it. Make sense? Okay. So is this logic correct? If what is equal to search text? Yes, but that will only match if I put in my search exactly equal to the message. But I, yeah, you can do that. But I want to be able to put any part of the search in my search. In other words, if it says go to the gym, I want to be able to just type gym and see it. Und understand the difference? If I did equals, I would have to write go to the gym to find go to the gym because it has to be equal. Yes? Okay. Is this logic correct? Look at it a little bit, because it's not, by the way. Can anyone see the problem? Right. So in other words, if search text is not specified, it's, I'm not going to get anything back. Right? But I don't want that. I want it so that if I don't specify a search text, I get everything back. So why don't we keep it really simple? If no search text is specified, return true. In all other cases, 
only return true if it matches the search text, else return false. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So, let's try it. Let's try to find everything that has the word gym in it. Did you see what happened? Exactly. I forgot to, I drew more, but I forgot to delete the previous values. I forgot to get rid of them from the DOM. If I were to now search for self, see, it found self, but it kept the rest of the list. So that means at the beginning in my draw list, I have to clear my original list. An easy way to clear a list is to just set its inner HTML to an empty string. You have the list. It's, the HTML inside is going to be an empty string. That means it's gone. Does that make sense? Now if I try it and I type Jim, I only get Jim. Shower, I only get shower. Why does search return everything true? Say again? Why does just, just hitting search now return everything? Is that your question? I'll tell you. Because of this. If there is no search text defined, it does not filter. It returns true for everything. Questions regarding this stuff? No questions? This is easy? Clear? Good. Yes. Yete inchi teve? Shower. Oh. Yeah. That? Yeah, that works. Because the index of just says what is the index of this? inside of this, and there it is. Yeah. You can make it case insensitive a few ways. You can either just too lower this entire string and too lower this entire string and compare them, right? So everything is lowercase, everything is lowercase, and you compare. Or you can use a regular expression if you know what that is. If you don't, don't worry about it. Yes? Uh-huh. Adi, Orinak, A. Oh, wait. What's, what's a letter that exists in... Uh, o. O. You're right. O. Oh, it's in all of them. Okay. How about... G? There you go. Did I answer your question? Right, so this is what they were talking about being case and set. Okay, watch this. So here's a simple thing you can do. Uh, so in here, we can convert the message to to lower case dot index of, and then convert this to lower case. What do you think to lower case will do? Exactly, it returns a string that is the to lower case of the original. And now if I, if I type G, wait, what? <laughs> T? Yeah, T, there you go. So we, we take this, we turn it into lo to lower. To lower returns the to lower version of that text. Of that, we do index of, and then we to lower the search text as well. Make sense? Questions? Yes. In Charlotte Sivonich? Okay. So let me explain what index of does. Imagine you have some text like, hello world. If I do that dot index of that, what will this return? Hello. 
Zero, one, two. This will return two. Make sense? If I do something like index of mm, that, what will that return? Negative one. Exactly. In other words, an illegal index, right? An index that is not legal. Make sense? Which is why I check to see if the index is bigger than or equal to zero. Is zero a legal index? Exactly. So it has to be bigger than or equal to zero to be legal. Is that part clear? Say that one more time. Yeah, they, uh huh, hang on, that's this here. You want me to explain that? Sure, no problem. All right, look. This accesses this, right? The inner HTML is all the stuff that, that goes on in, wait, it's all the stuff in here. Yes? Y the LIs that I'm creating here, these LIs, I'm appending to that list, right? That means the LIs are ending up here. You're getting an LI, whatever. You're getting another LI, whatever, etc. To clear it, I simply set the inner HTML of this to an empty text, which is that. You see how that means clearing? Let's inspect the DOM for you guys to see what this actually looks like. Look, I have a UL that has inside of it three LIs that I made. One that has go to the gym, one that has take a shower, and one has dry yourself. When I set the inner HTML of this to nothing, this, this, and this go away. Does that make sense? Okay, good, so it makes sense. So when I do T, I've cleared it and then I redrew it. Yeah, sort of. So this is clearing. This is getting the search text. This is filtering down the list of data. This is iterating over the data and for each data item, creating an LI and attaching it to the list. That's it. Okay, so do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to do the checkbox now? Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Okay, so let's add a checkbox. So how do I make a checkbox in HTML? Anyone know? Input type checkbox. Okay, so I have this input of type checkbox. Um, so let me select that checkbox. How, okay, question. How do I find, how do I select this input? Remember this? From this, I can call find and then find anything inside. In this case, there's only one input, so I can just write input. And that gives me the input. I can then do dot uh, prop checked and then do to do item dot completed. Is that what it is? Okay. I also want to know when the checkbox changes. Right, when you click on it, dot on, change, call this function. When the function changes, let's do to do item dot completed equals, you could do clicked, but because the value changed, right? It went from true to false or false to true. Make sense? So now let's do, um, you know what, let's store a reference to this input, const input, input.prop. Okay, how do I access checked? Actually, it's supposed to do prop. Okay, so here's a minor nuance. We talked about attributes, right? 
There's also a thing called prop. The difference of this is, is a nuance. It's, it's very minor. Attribute is what you set on an element in construction. Prop is what you access the, the, the attribute that's live. When an element is actually actively working and you want to access some value about it, you use prop. When you're creating an element, you use attribute. Does that sort of make sense? It's a nuance, I know, but it's stupid actually, but yeah. Why have attr and have prop? I don't know. I wish they only had one, to be honest. Which one? Uh, okay, whenever you get checked, just use prop. Good? Okay, good. All right, so uh, this will tell us whether something is completed. So, and I will get the checked value and I will put it into my completed um, attribute. Yes? Sort of? You guys see that? So whenever this change, the checkbox is changed, I will get the event and I will update my data with the value. Do you want me to explain that one more time? Okay, here's what we're doing. In addition to creating an LI, we're putting in the message, we're also creating an input box of type checkbox, which is a checkbox. Here we select that input and we put it into here. So this has a reference to this. With me so far? Okay, we first want to set the initial value whether it should be checked or not. Should it have a checkbox or not have a checkbox? Should it be checked or not? So for that, we simply do input.prop checked, and then we read from our data to do item.completed. If that, our data says that it's completed, we set it to, if it's not completed, we leave it blank. With me? We then say whenever that input changes, that is to say someone toggles it by clicking on it, we want to know about it. We then read whether it's checked or not, and we set that value, the Boolean value of true or false, to the completed attribute of my to-do item. Remember, I have a completed item, which is initially false. That means initially, they're all going to be not checked. When I click check, let's say I click check on this one in the li. It will set this, that value, to whatever comes back here. A little confusing? Yes. Watch. You see how it stays checked even after I clear it? Bless you. See how it's still checked? Why? When I click, what happens? Let's see. Okay, I just clicked on it. Hang on, let me make this a bit smaller. One sec. Okay. To do item is this object, right? Which is completed false. This is the ID. Notice it's the random math.random turned into a string and the message go to Jim. Right now completed is false, right? But then what I do is I do input prop.checked. That is to say, I ask the, check, the thing, are you checked or not? If it is checked, I set this to checked, to true. Else I set it to false. See, now it's, now it's true. I've just changed it to complete it true. If I untick, I've just set it to false. See? Is that clear? Questions so far? Later, 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 later. This is all clear. No? Okay, which part is not clear? In cheap. Checkbox. Okay. Watch this. Okay. This accesses input, right? I now have a jQuery object that has inside of it the input, right? I then do, I want to set its initial value to whatever this is. Right now it's false, right? So I want to make sure it's not checked. 
So I do checked false. That is to say, don't be checked. If it was checked, I would want to say, make sure you're checked. OK, imagine you're getting a to-do list from the server. Some items are checked, some items are not checked. When you draw the list, some you want to have a checkbox, some you don't want to have be checked, right? This is the value, the line that will tell you if it should be checked or not checked. You get it? Does anyone else get it? Okay. You then attach a change event. So when the, the checkbox is clicked, you will get this event. You will then ask the checkbox, are you checked or are you not? And then you will set that re resulting Boolean to completed. Yes? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Let's set the middle one to true. Let's have this one be true. That means here, right here, it's going to set the checkbox to checked, right? Watch this. See? Oh, a few people got it. Remember, I create the input. I get a reference to the input. I set whether the input should be checked or not. And then I listen to whenever the input changes. That's it. There was a question. Who had a question? But we don't, right? Right now, my list has one that is checked. See? Completed true. You could, I see what you're saying. You could have done this. You could have said, if to do item dot completed, then set this to true. Is this what you're saying? Okay, but do you see how this is basically kind of the same thing? Because completed is either true or false. Yes? Can you open the server side, please? There's Okay, so the request comes in, the request URL would be something like, it's this here, right? That gets, con con blah, gets concatenated with dot public, so you get dot slash public, that. And then you just read this from your file system. Huh? Right, right. You don't have to write public slash app.htm. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. Oh, you're saying if it doesn't have a URL. If it's just slash? Yeah. Yeah, you can, right, right, right. So you can say if rick.url is equal to slash, then maybe rick.url is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's good. Yes? Yes. Good. Other questions or things you want to see before we keep going? This is clear? Okay, now let's move our to-do list to the server. So right now, my to our to-do list is here on the client, right? There it is. Yes? <laughs> Hello. Hi. You see how it's on the client right now? Let's move this data to my server. There it is. It's on my server. Now it's stored somewhere else on, on a different computer. Why, what did I just do? See this list of to-dos? I, I moved it from ha being inside of my browser code to being inside of my server code, to being inside of Node. You, exactly. Why? When you ref access Facebook, right, you go and ask Facebook to get the timeline information, right? You don't have it locally. You have to go to Facebook and ask. So Facebook keeps the data, but then you request the data, yes? Same thing here. I want to have my server store my to-dos. So I'd, if, my, if I shut down my browser, 
and I turn it on or I go to a different computer and I go to the same page, I download the same data. So app.html is my HTML file, and then I have a node, node to do server that has my node code. Yeah, but look, okay, let me, let me show this one more time. So in the first example, we had all of our data already in our browser, and we're just showing it, right? Here's the data, draw it, yes? Now I'm saying we don't have the data. The data is on the server. We have to go get it from the server, then draw it. Yes, make sense? Think of how Google works, right? You don't have all the data that Google has. You make a request to Google, Google then brings you back search results, yes? So the data is originally on the server. You then make a request and get some of that data. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. All right, so let's move this over to our server. There it is. So now let's write a, a handler in our server to then send this data to our clients. So tell me, how can we check to see if the client wants this data? Yeah, so we can say if rec.url is equal to what? How about this? Good enough? Okay, so if it's equal to to-dos, then we want to send them back this information. So how do we send JavaScript objects across the wire? Does anyone remember? Yeah, we had an example. It was, hang on. Wait, 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 what was it, 15? This one. Okay, so we want to turn to-dos into JSON. We then send it back and we're done. In all other cases, we're gonna to try to serve out a file. Do you see this? Yes. Well, let's call it to-dos, but we can call it. This? It's this. Oh, okay. Yeah, you understand what it is? Okay. So it's the data, yes? Okay, so we're just gonna send that data as JSON back to the client. So now the next question, how does the client make the request in order to access the service? Okay, so the first thing we can do is just do this. Wait, oh, I haven't restarted my server, ah. There you go. That's the data. That's the array. Look, this is the array that came back. It's a list of these things. Looks familiar? What happened? How come when I wrote something here, I got something here? What happened? It just showed the data. Look, a to-dos request was made. It was a get request to my server. From here, the request went and got to here. Here, we, read, we turned our, our to-dos into JSON. We said that it's going to be JSON, and we sent it back to the client. The client got it and drew it on the, on the screen. And here it is. Server is in another file, right? So, server is in another file, right? Server is in a, This is not a file that is drawing. It's just drawing data. The response to this. <laughs> okay, look. 
Look, 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 look. This is a server. The server has to do's on it. Follow me here. I moved it. I moved it to the server. So, guys, look. Oh, my God. All right, l just listen. Here's what I did. I had some data on my client in the browser. I showed you how you can draw data once you have data on the client. I think we got that part. The second part was now let's move that data to the server and have the server send it to us when we ask for it, then draw it. Why would we want to ask the server for data? Because the server might have lots of data and we only want one piece of it. Think, imagine if you had all of Google's data on your computer. You can't do that, right? So you have to obviously go to Google and say, do a search and only give me back the stuff that I want. Google then gives you back some results, which then get rendered on the screen. Got it? Which is why I moved my to, imagine your to-dos gets really, really big, like huge. You can't hold that much data on your browser. Furthermore, if you refresh your browser, all of the data that you had there goes away. Yes? Imagine if you make a variable in your JavaScript, you, you put a 2 in it. If you refresh your browser, that variable is gone. So you don't want your to-do list to get lost. You want it to always be there on the server. So that every time you make a request, you get it back. Got it? OK, that's why I moved the to-do list to the server. Now, then we made, a we made a handler so that when you make a request to the server, it can send you that data back. Are you still with me? <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> you have a server. <laughs> it has data. You have clients that can say, give me that data. And the server says, meh. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> so I'll get to the ID. Okay. Just so you understand where this is going, if you want to delete something, you just send the ID. It finds the thing with the ID and deletes it. But why write the for the delete button? Not just delete. It's for lots of things. But delete also. Yes. They might match. The probability is so low that don't worry about it. Uh, other questions? Should I keep going? Or are we lost? You're lost? OK. All right. No problem. It's OK to be lost. Explain to me where you're confused. <laughs> where do we begin? From binary. <laughs> From binary. <laughs> All right, guys, wait, 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 wait. Focus. Did you understand the browser part? No? How do you know what to write there is a complicated question. <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that question. Um, OK, do you know HTML? Do you know CSS? Do you know JavaScript? <laughs> Go like this, at least. OK, you sort of know JavaScript. Do you understand how jQuery works? OK. Look, I don't expect you guys to have a fluent understanding of everything I'm talking about. Because the only way you're going to get fluent at it is by doing the homework assignments, which is coming. But this is to get you ready for the homework assignment, because it's going to be fairly, writing a to-do list is, it's, it's pretty rich. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the homework today, yeah. Sometime the following week, I don't know, maybe Wednesday? Yeah, a week and a half. Yeah. Scroll down. OK, remember, guys, this is kind of important. In your homework assignments, you're going to have to write services that can create things, that delete things, that update things, and that get things. 
So far, we've only gotten to the part where you get something. <laughs> and it's now 2.40. That means we have 10 minutes to do everything else. Five oh, five minutes. Crap. All right. OK, I'll, here's what I'll do. Listen, don't panic. With the homework assignments, I will paste sample code to help you. I will paste you the code that you need to make a request from the client to the server. I will even paste like a handler, an example of a handler on the server. So you can kind of follow that pattern and get going. I'm not going to be able to get much done in five minutes, but OK, let's at least finish this. Bear with me. So we have a service where given to do's, it returns the list, yes? OK, let's go back here. Now in our draw list, let's first get the list. So we can get the list. <laughs> Relax, it's not that complicated, just look. This is the URL, this is the method, this is the, the kind of stuff that we expect to get back, JSON. Don't worry about that for now. This is where we get back the data. And this is where we're going to draw it. Hang on. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Let me just quickly show you this part. OK, just understand this. This list, guys, guys, listen, listen, listen. This list came from the server. Let me show you how. When I called their draw list, I made a request to the server to get the data. The server sent me back the data. I then cleared my unordered list and drew it on the screen. So that means if I, if I then go to the server again, this is my server, right? If I change it to don't go to the don't. Wait, what? Ah. Oh, I have to restart. Shit, hang on. Now I get don't go to the gym. Again, I'm trying to explain to you guys what's happening here. This function, the Ajax function, is what you use to make a request to the server. You say the address that you want to make the request to, the kind of request you want, this is an HTTP GET request, and the kind of data you expect back. It will call you success if everything works fine, and your error function if things have, don't go well. In this case, I get back the list, I clear my, my, my DOM, and I render that list. Questions about this? Why did we do AJAX in this case? What is AJAX? It's an HTTP request. You're saying, why did the client make a request to the server? Are there other ways to make HTTP requests from the client? Well, what other way do you know? So there, look, this AJAX function is a function that was written for you to make HTTP requests easy to do. So this, while there are other ways to do it, this is the easiest, one of the easier ones. It's just a function. You give it a few parameters, and when it gets the data, it calls your function. That's it. Guys, hold up. Just look at this code and tell me if you can't understand it. Raise your hands if you can't understand this code up until here. This much, right now. 
You can't understand it, really? Okay, okay, pay attention if you don't understand it. Ajax is a function. It takes a, as a parameter an object that contains the URL of where you want to call the HTTP, where you want to send your HTTP request, the kind of method, the HTTP method that you want to use, and the kind of data you expect back. Is that something you don't understand? Okay, then you give it a function that says, give me, call this function with the data that the server sends me. That's it. One more time. You say, send a request to the server to this address with this method. Call this function when you're done. That's all this is doing. Is that part unclear to anybody? Okay. Then once you have that list, you simply loop over it and draw it on the screen using this code. So? We have a function called Ajax. This function takes an object. The object contains within it all the information that it needs in order to do its job. Its job is to make an HTTP request to the server and get back data. When it does that, it will call your success function with the data that it got from the server. You then draw that data on the screen. That's it. Raise your hands if you don't understand this code. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. One more, just to clarify. This is a function. You call the function with this object that contains inside of it these properties. This is where the request is going to go. This is the method the request is going to use, and this is the kind of data you expect back from the server. This is the function that will get called once you get the data back. Is this part, is anyone confused about this part? Sorry. But we don't have to use the JS right in our product. What do you want to use? Well, you have to make a request to the server, right? Does anyone not understand this part? That you can make a request to the server and get back data? You don't understand it. You do understand. Does anyone not understand it? Okay, so are you guys confused about the rendering, this part? Ah, okay, no problem. This puts the, makes the HTML inside of this element nothing. Is that part clear? Okay, we, we know this, good. This loops over, the, the to-dos is an array. We loop over each item in the to-do. It's the same thing as this, look. It's basically the same thing as that. Is that simpler? Exactly. So I don't understand why people are like, you should have done it this way. Okay, but all this is saying is loop over the to-dos. For every to-do, for every to-do, create an LI, and then attach it to the list. Forget the checkbox stuff for a second. Forget this. Is this part clear? It's 250. It's 250. Raise your hands if you don't understand just the code that remains. 
the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines of code. Is anyone confused with the ten lines of code? Yes. Yes. Come to office hours. <laughs> Everyone else, thank you so much. Let's take a photo. I'm Sarko of Karen. Great.